It's been very hot. I want to thank God uh, for that. At the same time, you did see also in uh, Juba, yes, I was uh, informed that the rain also had some... Oh, the blessings went up to, that is, uh, Sudan, uh, the, 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 the neighboring countries where you had a lot of issues that probably pushed also. But all in all, we're here. It's the Monday. It's the Monday. It's the Holy Week, I should say. Um, vermin always tend to, 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 to be holy during only the periods where you need to be holy. But I believe it should be all the time being holy and you have the best of your time. Now, always the Zaka is behind him. I don't want I will be talking about Susie. Welcome and good afternoon. Uh, thank you so much. Good afternoon, uh, Owen. Um, uh, probably your Easter could have been good. Yeah, because, I had a nice Easter. Okay. Um, I had uh, visitors. I had uh, ways that I went through. I, I was invited for different, uh, from different people. Okay. You know, being with friends. True, true. It counts. It counts, yeah. Um, uh, good afternoon, uh, viewer. You're most welcome. We saw time uh, 2 to 3. A lot happened over the weekend, locally, internationally, nationally, where certain teams uh, were able to tie on a draw. <laughs> that was yesterday, a clash of titans. The Manchester City uh, with uh, there is uh, Arsenal were able to go on a barren there. And then uh, locally, uh, the other time you told us about uh, the FUFA executive countrywide tour, uh, we discussed that, and uh, they are starting tomorrow, second, uh, where they will be in uh, the eastern region. Yeah, a couple of uh, post, uh, discussions from the eastern side, I did see, I did, did see them in the central, I did see them, uh, they are coming to West Nile, of course, uh, we shall be having uh, to see them because they are teaching people about uh, what will be, what they think the league should be like teaching the stakeholders of course about the lower leagues how you should be pushing in there and so all those are some of the things that are coming through are right there from the federation's uh, move that is there uh, so we shall maybe they come when they when they come we shall be right there to see but uh trendingly right now is about the ed cup of course uh, arua has ed cup and i'm also well aware of the yumbe ed cup that is also ongoing uh, but all in all, you can also be part of the show by always uh, following uh, the television or the different platforms uh, for those who could not afford probably to subscribe. Uh, but you can also go to the YouTube, go to the Facebook and make sure that you be able uh, to be part of the show. You drop your comments also uh, in the comment box uh, so that you can be part of the show. Ask that question you would love to know. Ask us and uh, we'll be uh, reading them out to you and probably answer uh, to you at the right time. But all in all, the ED Cup continues. The media team people have failed to go uh, because I had you were given a slot, uh, a slot which you have not participated. But it's going on very well right now as I talk in, uh, in that is uh, Barifa. And uh, teams are playing. I uh, have not gotten all the results, but they are playing and a lot of teams have registered. At the same time, you have also one in, uh, in, 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 uh, in, in Yumbe, where of course also it's organized by one of, uh, I think, uh, the, 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 the schools. And uh, that school is organizing to make sure that these games are keep going on well. Uh, now, my challenge with the ED Cup is that uh, even licensed players are involved to play that is one. Two, uh, clubs, I think, need to take strict measures because you're going to see a, a professional player, let's say, from the top tier league, from the, going to play this game, and I think which has impact of injuries and the rest mm -hmm. in there. So I want to say it's a nice move, but uh, uh, I would want clubs to take serious, uh, serious questions or about their players because these players are the same people who are going to come uh, to play. Uh, for us in Undupraka, I want to say we are watching it closely. Any player that will be, of course, uh, absconding, uh, not like a, uh, you, you're not following, of course, the rules and regulations of the club. Two, you are going against breaching a contract, uh, your contract. So that is one thing but, uh, that is going on. But the purpose of the ED Cup is always to unite. Uh, the, the, the players to unite people, you know, this is the Ramadan season and clubs, uh, I mean, uh, Muslims are looking forward to see that this goes on right there. So that was the update I wanted really so much to give about the ED Cup. Now, uh, back to uh, what exactly happened in to the regional leagues. A couple of games were played in the regional league and uh, we're expecting a lot. Arua City this time round got a win away and that's one talking point I would love us to start with. 
Um, Arua City, I think, have uh, reorganized from uh, the previous games that actually they have been having. Uh, they've literally been having a lot of uh, losses uh, from uh, the time they played, I think, Pakwachi Youngsters uh, in there. And uh, the time they lost to Pakwachi Youngsters, that was home, literally. Uh, they lost home. So uh, basically, I think uh, after that, uh, they were equally also beaten on uh, an away spree where they traveled to play Nyahama. Mm -hmm. uh, they played a draw, I think, and then from there, they also had uh, this very uh, way that uh, where they were able to pick a win uh, so basically after that uh, they are coming home to again have another game so i think uh, they realized where their mistakes were and uh, they, they 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 went down to drawing boards and had to fix in where the problems came in from so uh, b but then uh, initially somewhere somehow to me i think i was it relaxed they started very well by the way they started very well on high gears we are winning in games away home and all that uh, somewhere, somehow, I think there was some elasticity uh, from Adori's management to uh, up to the players and the rest, and it greatly affected uh, there is, uh, some of the results that came, kept coming through, and uh, it literally also affected in, uh, their uh, positions on the table standings over there is, uh, the regional league in Yagaki zone there. So if they have started going back to uh, there is a uh, winning ways, trust me, it's quite something very good for them. I want to repeat myself that there's one thing, uh, one problem with Arua City, which is uh, all about people who are not really. Arua City has everything. They would have brought in to see that uh, uh, they, they should be the winners, or even on the table, but uh, they, they were not able to make sure that they get themselves there. Why? Uh, because the leaders in the council or the, or the people who are supposed to run this are not running this club as it is supposed to. Uh, because. Uh, we have seen people who had invested in this club, maybe one or two, five, five, six, seven millions, are not are reluctant now anymore because the club is not um, uh, the club is not giving them what is there. Then two, the money that they have invested are not being sent to 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 to, 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 to clubs. I mean to the teams. So which affects them, of course. And uh, I, I I believe. Uh, the boys, though, you see, this is an amateur league, it would be very easy even to manage such a team. But because the board is not doing the right thing, it is very hard for them to handle. I want to repeat myself that the kits of Arua City are in stock. Up to now, no one has opened it out to be sold. Now, what does that show? That means there's individuals who are not willingly to make sure that this works out for a club so i think it's a very tight one uh in the other zone you would see that maybe i uh, mean by the black angels uh are still in that battle again with pakwachi youngsters in a uh, right there and pai, uh, maybe uh, paida had a very good game recently uh in, in the weekend uh they of course uh, won and now the contest, the tight race. By, by, the, by the Black Angels, one, now one goal to zero. Well, first half ended zero, zero. And then somewhere, somehow, uh, Pakwachi Youngsters uh, drew zero, zero. It was a Pakwachi derby. Uh, Pakwachi Youngsters played. Uh, there is a Pakwachi uh, super egos in there. So um, uh, initially, they had uh, a, a, a point gap of uh, one, uh, two. Uh, though it was two, yeah, it was two. But now, uh, for the fact that uh, Pakwachi youngsters gets to play 0-0 zero, zero with uh, there is a Pakwachi Super Eagles, uh, meaning uh, they added uh, onto themselves one point and left one to there is Pakwachi Super Eagles. Whereas Apaida uh, collected all the three points, there is by the Black Angels collected all the three points, uh, meaning uh, they get back on top of the table with, again, uh, a point gap of, I think, two or one uh, with uh, there is a Pakwachi uh, young uh, stars in there. Very tight one for uh, Nyagaki Zona leaders yeah it's a tough one of course we shall be waiting to see how exactly it ends uh, but i've loved the rest i've loved how the teams are pushing harder uh, to see that they really need to uh, acquire what exactly is needed because uh, it's one big thing uh, a team has to i remember after here they are supposed to go for zonos mm -hmm. and the zonos that uh, you, you you get a team that should go and represent west nile region again representing west nile region you need to go for playoffs after the playoffs it's when your fate determines whether you are to qualify uh, for for the game or no so uh big league is still a very open way uh, to see that these teams really need to uh, make it uh, through right there so regional league is very very uh, big let's leave that there and uh, get to the fufa big league we did sell a lot of games that went uh, during the weekend which we talked about yeah and uh, out of that one of the game was uh, the Unduparaka game i remember i was here and i did uh, confirm that 
um, with the turn of the team uh, that is coming, with uh, the style of play of the team that is coming, uh, who are coming to see a tight game. But uh, at the same time, Munduporaka had to outplay the team of uh, Chigezu homeboys, uh, uh, making them, of course, go back with uh, no point. Uh, a tough one. I did see a lot of social media banter uh, before the game, but uh, all in all, it went on right down there. So this is where we are starting from. Onduparaka won the game by three goals uh, to uh, three goals to, uh, to 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 zero. Uh, of course, you could say clean sheet, but uh, a few names that we talked about who were not there in the game came through and uh, couldn't play. But still, amidst all that, you did see the game go on. Um, what did you see in that game that uh, maybe lacked or that made this become a winning game? Uh, to me, uh, by the way, first of all, um, uh, the names. The list that we had we were supposed to miss was very scary uh, because uh, the list was quite there. A couple of players, very key players, and uh, most of the players that actually were named out uh, that we were supposed to miss in this fixture were players in uh, that is uh, the first team. So basically, uh, there was some little bit of a uh, uh, fear instilled in there to someone who literally knows uh, the strength of uh, some of uh, the players that actually were named. Uh, to, 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 to miss uh, some of uh, to miss actually the game that went down on Saturday up against uh, Shigezi Home Boys. But uh, basically, um, uh, the boys that actually also went in for this game represented very well. Uh, boys played out their hearts, I should say, and every other person partnered so, so well with whoever they were supposed to partner with. So I think uh, basically uh, the, the, the drills, the trainings and the rest uh, this time around counted in uh, on uh, that uh, Saturday game. A very brilliant performance according to me. A perfect, uh, perfect match uh, between Abidai Ezra and Samson Siso Kuti and then uh, Mungu Feni Jonathan. Everyone was okay. And then uh, in the substitute, um, uh, when we saw um, uh, when we saw uh, Debran coming through, he equally also came in with some some pressure. But uh, to me, I felt uh, uh, Samson Sizo Kuti needed to go out, and uh, Bida needed to still stay in. But uh, of course, as outside here, our opinions are not <laughs> the opinions of the coach. That is Mr. Ahmed Abouini. But then, all in all, congratulations! It was the three points and the three goals that mattered at the end of the ninety. Yeah, a tough game it was, of course, uh, but interestingly, uh, I did see Chigeze have uh, an impressive game, yeah, but of course couldn't uh, count in or uh, make sure that they got the goals rightly for the teams uh, through uh, any angle, but they pressed also on the Poraka Football Club, just like I did say, uh, the good side, but still knowing, uh, to me, I watched, uh, when I watched the game, I looked at uh, the coach had that fear of the team, of course, going offensively against Wendoparaka Football Club, which uh, costed them a lot because uh, we saw most of the game goals that were trying to come in uh, found them when they are too much defensive. And, of course, the breakthrough uh, made them go in there. So it is one thing that killed them. Uh, they thought of uh, maybe uh, trying to make sure that the game uh, was uh, to be at least a draw uh, because they, 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 they needed to uh, up in. You know, offensively, if they were going, you would maybe see uh, th uh, threats coming from a uh, different. But uh, one player, Kada, uh, when he was put off of the game, it is one thing that costed him because uh, uh, that costed the team because he was one of the key players, creative players. But Gaspar couldn't allow him penetrate through him, yeah. and that is one thing that, of course, killed them out of the game. Uh, you saw the defense line of uh, the team of. Uh, Chigezi, yes, there were arrow balls wouldn't work for them, and uh, for more, if uh, for more, or the team had to now. That's when Ndubraka had to know that we need to put the balls down because arrow balls were not working. And indeed, through that, they got the goals, and uh, you did see them uh, become uh, are the winners of the day. Um, if you look at uh, the coach and uh, the coach of Chigezi. And uh, the body language of the players, you would see that uh, seriously, there are a lot of things that probably uh, needed to be worked upon. And that is one thing that came. Then I should say also the distance that came all the way from uh, there and you're coming to play. Uh, Nduparaka Football Club, that is home. Uh, you're having, uh, um, you know the pitch is, uh, by the way, Nduparaka's pitch size is to the standard. You can compare it to the Old Trafford right uh, there because that's the measurement. Uh, that is, it is being made unto only that Old Trafford is uh, uh, developed, uh, which has um, uh, the, the, the pavilions and the rest. But the size of Onduparaka's Green Light Stadium is our uh, standard over. That is Old Trafford. So 
it's, 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 it was one big thing. Uh, always when you're coming in for such a game, that is the first fear of, uh, of, 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 of this club. So it's one thing that went on. But uh, when we leave that there, um, we did also see games that came through where, of course, Black's power were still uh, also emerged uh, another side uh, because they did beat Karo Karunja at their own home in Lida. Three goals to nil and Black's power still keeps fighting for the rest. They also want to go to top three. Um, and uh, for them, I think uh, they are kind of having a little bit of a smooth run if you look at uh, their positions in there. Uh, uh, Black's power from uh, the time uh, they came to Onduparaka and uh, beat Onduparaka, one goal to zero uh, from that late game that came in from uh, uh, there is a Maduka. You'd uh, basically see in that uh, that changed a lot, a lot, a lot uh, for uh, there is a Black's power in uh, their positioning there. That alone pushed them higher uh, to, of course, uh, making in their chances uh, be are uh, very viable uh, to it that uh, they still have chances, very high chances to others uh, qualify. And then uh, beating others uh, Karunji home, I think uh, to me this was something that I already anticipated because Black's Power, if they are able to pick wins our way uh, when they are the visitors, what happens when they are home? Uh, meaning uh, but it, it, it becomes so, so much very easy for them. But um, one thing that disturbed me, by the way, uh, from uh, there is uh, the Black's Power game, against uh, Karo Karunji was that I saw uh, 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 pictorials over this game uh, and uh, I only saw players man there were no fans I mean uh, in the comment section I saw somewhere people were asking um, uh, what is what has happened to uh, Black's power I, is this how their games are always without fans and all that do they have fans in Lira don't they have fans and all that so basically that also triggered in some little bit of thought uh, there is uh, in my brains uh, to see to it that uh, uh, if they're able to play without fans and win what happens if they had a very huge uh, turn up uh, for uh, their games just like Ondu Paraka did but then uh, that's in that uh, they were able to uh, register three goals and uh, the three points up against Karakarunji at uh, Akiba in Lira. Yeah right now the lie of course with that two points at number five and that's one big thing that he should be Akataka is in front of them and uh, probably with 33 points are just a one point shy uh, they are uh, behind Kataka and that gives you an opinion of uh, what exactly is next now what about the other teams that probably have uh, games that they have been playing uh, it's one question that everybody is asking but a very good move for blacks power after winning against karo karunji right there as chida also were three two winners over young elephants of noya after of course a very big one and uh jemba ola's side seems not to be doing well in the entire games uh, this is match day 21 they have so far won only two games in the entire game and six draws uh, that has kept them still in the relegation zone but that's a very challenging moment for the team they are very challenging moment yes we anticipated for me literally as i anticipated uh that uh, um, uh it was going to be a very tough one for there is a young elephant in Noya. much as they were home yes um uh, chinda boys that uh, came through uh, but i think uh, uh they went in and played they went to chinda's home okay um yeah. uh, uh this game uh, it was going to be very tough for there is a young elephant it's actually now that uh, young elephants is trying to see that uh, they win in games look at uh, the goals because this wasn't something very bad for young elephants but then as the season is coming to a it close it's not bad it's okay okay because based they on goals, the usual yes, yes. but uh, based still, on the usual results mm, mm, three mm, two mm. Based on the usual results, 3-2, to me, I think a young elephant is improving, but they are improving at the wrong time. Uh, because check out uh, their previous stats uh, to this. Uh, there is where they drew police 3-3, three, three. there is where they drew a uh, Calvary 0-0, zero, zero, and then uh, going uh, to, 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 to Chuyinda, and you're playing a 3-2, one goal away and all that. So basically, to me, I think uh, they are improving, but improving at a very wrong time. Whichever way they do it this time around, I don't see them surviving. All right, Chetume played against Ginger North and a game that ended uh, in a goalless draw between Chetume and Ginger. I remember we talked about that and saying it's probably uh, like a game that is uh, like a neighboring uh, team fighting and we thought it should be a, de a derby uh -huh. uh, right there because Mukono and Ginger are just so close uh, for those who have made travels and for those who have not made travels, probably <laughs> that's what I can tell you. Uh, it is so big uh, that uh, you would see it's just a few minutes to reach to the place. So uh, that's one big thing that has come in there. But they had a draw, uh, which keeps uh, Chetume still the hopes of uh, fighting for the uh, relegation battle. Likewise, uh, to you, that is Ginger North that is uh, uh, fighting also for the relegation battle right there. Uh, 
Mbale he was an uh, Lugazi Mbale was at Mbale at uh, that is uh, uh, the Boma grounds of Mbale or Mbale municipal grounds and then of course Lugazi uh, came all the way from Lugazi to Mbale and still managed to pick up a point they have a focus and a purpose um, uh, I think uh, Mbale heroes and Lugazi are playing in a 1-1 uh, is quite something very good uh, for uh, the both teams Mbale uh, before they went to play there is a Lugazi they lost to Kataka one goal to zero the neighbors yeah, that was a very huge derby and then uh, by losing out all the three points and then coming uh, to Lugazi and being able to at least go back with one goal and sharing this points to me is uh, quite something very good and uh, this time around I think uh, Mbale Heroes is looking into uh, containing themselves within the league because this is the very first time they've come through uh, but they've always had struggles they go to the finals and they eject it they've not always pushed through uh, to uh, there is a big league so this time around one of the biggest focus was to push through to big league now that they are here i think uh, this time around another focus is uh, to keep within the league because uh okay if you look at uh, the table standings yes they still have hopes of uh, of course playing so hard if if they can win in all their remaining games which of course is very hard uh in that uh they push to upl but apparently i think uh, for now uh, the biggest focus here is to keep within uh, the big league the two sides have won all nine games and of course uh, drawn eight times uh, right there. One loss for that is Lugazi and one loss uh, for that is Tima. I mean three for that is Mbali Heroes which of course uh, seems to be so tight uh, because uh, Lugazi uh, still has played around uh, 18 games. They still have games at hand and uh, they have uh, uh, but Mbali Heroes that was their 20th game and that means it, it still has challenge to do with the team uh, probably to progress and um, Bali, after losing to Kataka 1-0 was also such challenging for them uh, because uh, it wasn't really uh, going to be enough uh, for them to uh, prove uh, them wrong. So it's so challenging for them but uh, I believe Mbale may not finish there if because their form is dropping, deteriorating. Mm -hmm. So though they are trying to keep consistency in the rest but they are trying to fought, totally falling out because of one or two issues uh, that is facing right there so yeah a very big challenge a very big challenge but all in all we're waiting for what exactly will be coming right there now of course the table standings that shows you that police still leads with 40 points uh, and then uh, they still have uh, one game at hand lugazi with number at uh, number second of course uh, with 35 uh, points 35 is also mbale heroes uh, and then kataka with 33 uh black Spar with 32 and then you have uh, 29 is Chiinda, Boma 28, uh, 26 is Onduparaka with uh, that point. Uh, Chigezo also has 26. And then you have uh, Calvary that has 24. Of course, one uh, position shy to the relegation. Uh, 21 is uh, Karo Karunji, Chetume back to the uh, bottom uh, red zone. Uh, with 19, 18 is Ginger North, and then 12 points is what, of course, a young elephant is having, and that's what exactly is happening. The FUFA big league, right? Then a couple of games are coming, by the way, uh, in the big league, uh, come on 7th, uh, which is going to be a tight one for uh, every other team. Now, uh, teams like Calvary will be traveling to Boma, and uh, Ginger will be welcoming uh, Ginger North will be welcoming Chiinda boys. Karu Karunji will be welcoming at Chetume Football Club. And then you have a team at Chigeze Homeboys welcoming Katak at home. Not an easy game. Uh, Lugazi will be welcoming Blacks Power. A tight game to watch as Young Elephant in Noya will be welcoming team on Duparaka Football Club. Now, those are the games that you're expecting right there. And uh, Kataka, uh, their next game will be against Young Elephants in Kataka. Uh, they, they, they are going for another one and then you have uh, Calvary welcoming police Chinda boys will be welcoming uh, Karu Karunji Chetume will be playing Lugazi as Mbali Heroes takes on Boma and Onduparaka welcomes Ginger North at Greenlight Stadium those are some of the two next games for you in the uh, next games of uh, FUFA Big League or the Bet Power FUFA Big League it's going to be intense and so tight uh, to see that uh, our teams are uh, progress uh, to the next levels now when we leave that there yes uganda premier league also saw uh, actions that went on and uh, charles livingston babazi was not involved in the game of uh, viper sports club and ura a ura a had a game with vipers at saint uh, at, uh, lugogo and uh, in this game it was a was -was goal that of course had to seal it off uh, beating of course team ura a by two goals uh, two nil now 
Oboa said that uh, it is not about that. He expected Vipers to play better than them, but they <laughs> didn't play. Instead, you are he played beautiful football than Vipers, though Vipers won. What is always the best thing? <laughs> Um, uh, I think uh, David Owo uh, uh, always uh, has um, uh, has a way of coming up and uh, accepting whichever result his team registered against any other any other team. And at this time around, uh, but you are uh, uh, playing Vipers. Uh, there was a very quick goal that, of course, I came through uh, uh, to demolish. Uh, there is a URA. Uh, but then, uh, but David Obua took in that very positively uh, to actually see to it that uh, but he. He thought maybe there was still some time that he would come back and, of course, equalize this game and be able to score a win and all that. But basically, this did not happen. And one fact I love about David Obua is uh, his patience with every result that comes through, his patience with his players and all that. Basically, he understands that uh, they both need time to get there. So uh, this result where they lost to Vipers, yeah, they watched that game, Vipers. Uh, but displayed a very average uh, performance, just like Arsenal players did yesterday. Uh, but then, about that in that, uh, I think uh, uh, it was quite a very good one for Vipers. They really, really needed that win uh, for the fact that uh, they were lying in position number fifth, I think, on other is a certain junior Premier League tables there. Uh, we all know they are chasing in the, 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 the trophy, the titles. Uh, so, uh, basically, uh, that was quite a very good one for them to see to it that they draw near. Oboa states that uh, overall uh, he knows that they are lost. He has accepted the loss, but uh, overall they knew. They saw the game and they are champions, uh, defending champions also, have, have better player than, uh, than uh, you are. Right. <laughs> but still, they should be playing a better football than that. So he expected that to be a very good experience and he's giving them advice. But it was all anti Karim Watambala and Moses Waiswa who got the two goals for that is the team of Viper Sports Club uh, to make sure that the two sides are uh, really had to separate themselves so, and uh, this is double loss for URA and uh, of course uh, Vi uh, against Vipers but again it's the first loss of uh, URA uh, or David Obua at that is uh, home against uh, any other team so that's one big thing that uh, has been broken right there but of course we can still keep moving on right there we talked about uh, about uh, the, 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 the top scorer chat uh, battle that has been also one of the biggest thing to talk about but yesterday Nelson Senka took a had to show them what exactly he is made of. The uh, Saltillo Bright Stars uh, player had to score two goals uh, to make his team, uh, of course, win four goals uh, right there. And this was a very, very big one. Now, that means Senka Tuka leads the scoring with, of course, uh, 13 goals. Uh, we, uh, with, of course, Kessel Sears, Mohamed Shaban, and Dennis Omedi still tied at 11, 11 yeah. goals uh, right there. Um, uh, initially, uh, he has, of course, now pulled away uh, from uh, there is uh, the, the the eleven bit of it. There were three people tied there: him, um, uh, Bomedi, and uh, Muhammad Shaban. And now that yesterday he was able to register in the two goals, to his names are pushing it to thirteen. Um, I think uh, these others are yet also going to fight. If uh, Muhammad Shaban had registered a goal uh, the other time, uh, they had uh, a massive run or in in, in their game. Uh, but I think uh, basically uh, they would equally also be moving. But uh, this is not quite so bad yet. I think uh, the three to me are still all uh, within a very is uh, the competition it's yet still a uh, very tough for them and uh, yesterday's win uh, meant so so much for them and it was quite a very good one and uh, running in that race of a uh, top scorer it's going to be a very tough one this season all right now if you look at what exactly happened that uh, this uh, probably should be yeah, this is uh, Saltillo Bright Stars' uh, sixth winner out of the 22 games that they have played uh, right there. And this game lifted them, of course, to a better place at number 10 with 28 points uh, right there. And this was a very crucial win at Kavumba Recreational Center. I think uh, they really deserved this, and which has also pushed them uh, to see that they get the best uh, for the team. Sen Katuka still keeps making the headline yet again. And uh, we, uh, should we say, he is uh, getting off from the frustrations that he had had. Uh, his, uh, he had frustration before and couldn't score, but now he's back. He moved the clubs to club. He came back to uh, Soltillo Bright Stars. I think Bright Star is where he can do better. Um, I think yeah, he has found peace. Basically, people normally perform where there is peace. This is in all aspects and prospects of life. And uh, initially, he suffered, yes. Uh, but for football, uh, we all know and all uh, hear people saying that football is a mind game, football is and all that and all that. So uh, basically, um, uh, 
if you're playing in or if you're going in for a fixture and your brain is not at peace, trust me, you will not perform. We've seen even a lot of good players are failing to score where someone goes in and every other person is expecting maybe a goal to come through from, from this person and over. At the end of the day, uh, the game, 90 minutes go just like that, you will not even see a goal in there and all that. Basically, it comes to peace of mind. So I think currently where he is, um, as well celebrators stars is where he's very peaceful and uh, that's why we are seeing him perform. All right, a very big one, and that's one big thing that we shall be looking at. You know, of course, if you look at uh, another story in the athletics world, there it was a uh, world cross country uh, that, of course, went on, where, of course, uh, Jacob Kiplimo still kept himself and def uh, uh, defended the champion in the world cross country championship right there. And according to the world athletes, Kiplimo's gold uh, has attracted him uh, around uh, 30,000 US dollars. Are very awesome, very interesting, very big money. Uh, if converted to the Ugandan money, and that's exactly what he is doing right there. So he still keeps it there. What makes him keep fit? What makes him do this is what we don't know. But he has again kept that. Are we seeing him in the next one? Yeah, this 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 is quite a very good one. Um, uh, winning a gold for there is a team Uganda. Uh, in the uh, cross uh, country that was of course uh, done in Serbia. Um, I think it was quite a very good and he broke his own records. Uh, this game uh, they had a lot of uh, people uh, that went in there. We had uh, Jacob Chiplimo, uh, we had uh, Beru Are Arigawi, uh, we had uh, Benson uh, Chiplengat, we had Nicholas uh, Chimeli, uh, Samuel uh, Chebole, Joshua Cheptegei also representing Team Uganda, and then uh, Sebastian uh, Sawe and uh, Shadrach Rono. And uh, the way I've read in the names is actually how uh, they went in in there we saw on Joshua Cheptegei, of course, finishing in uh, position number six. Of course, uh, with uh, his uh, colleague brother that represented Uganda finishing in position number one, there is Jacob Chuplimo uh, bringing in a gold. Uh, there is uh, for Uganda. It's quite a very good one, and this, of course, all narrows down to uh, hard work and peace. That all right, so good. exactly. Now, that's one big thing in there, but of course, when you cross away from uh, that athletics world, we go to motorsports, and a lot of things are happening in the motorsports uh, right there. Of course, uh, it was the Kenyan rally that it was ongoing in the motorsports uh, with a very big thing and uh, Kale, uh, Rov, uh, of course, uh, Rovampera still keeps uh, dominating after, of course, uh, he cruised uh, in the safari rally and, of course, got that win, uh, probably a very, very big one. Uh, f uh, in, in, in the Finland's, uh, 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 of course, uh, driver had all it took to make sure that uh, they really needed to dominate this and had a very good display, a classy one ahead of the rally that took place in that is uh, the second safari rally and he became champion or victor uh, victorious against all the drivers at this game how uh, this rally was on sunday in uh, that is uh, naivasha in kenya so for those who did not follow this yes he was the champion of uh, the day he's just 23 years of age and uh, won the event uh, to register the 12th of his career i think outstanding do we have drivers in uganda that you could be we have heard about very many names that probably have come through but it is very hard for them always to compete and win in there apart from one or two that uh, the super lady has tried so much to do that but she has also failed of late she's not the lady that we're hearing about in the driving just like in europe you're seeing the formula one max verstappen has dominated of late lewis hamilton uh who of course now thinks he also is going to be crossing over i i am meant to know ferrari wants to him uh from that is mercedes but all these are some of the things you could be seeing that are so challenging. So, yeah, it was the motorsports in there. Uh, the Japanese uh, uh, Takumoto uh, Kashuto was also in contest, but of course uh, he was a victim of the safari rally troubles uh, that he managed uh, really to uh, climb back, bringing another Toyota to the podium to see that he really continued with his move uh, right there. So it was not an easy one. It was an intense pressure that kept piling here and there, and uh, this really affected the team right there. So that brings us to yet a break. We'll be coming back to give you some of the international stories that are coming from uh, all the angles of the sports discipline, uh, including, of course, the football that everybody loves so much uh, with Arsenal, of course, holding Manchester City to a goalless draw at Etihad Stadium in the city of Manchester.
West Nile TV, lighting up the region. Nile TV, lighting up the region. From that break and still West Nile Television live on West Nile uh, TV. Uh, for those who are watching, I want to check on your comments, uh, drop in uh, every other thing. But of course, we have some time live here. And uh, with me, Susie, I am Owen Izaga. And uh, of course, big talking points still continue, Susie. Yesterday, Liverpool climbed on top after pulling down, the of elephant. course, the young elephant. <laughs> the baby elephant. <laughs> By the way, what is the young one for the elephant? <laughs> a baby elephant or... Yeah, we saw Liverpool uh, going up there, but it was a very tough one for Liverpool. Uh, first half, we saw uh, it ending in a level there, 1-1. One, one. Uh, but then at the end of 90 minutes, we saw uh, Liverpool, of course, uh, going top of the table, uh, beating uh, those of the opponents. Of course, uh, two goals to one. That was a very brilliant one for uh, there is a uh, team Liverpool in there. Whereas their neighbours... <laughs> um, if you look at uh, what exactly is happening... Um, uh, Pep Guardiola said that Liverpool are the favourites uh, to win the trophy mm -hmm. after yesterday's game. Um, here at the press conference. But if you look at the previous or the remaining games of the three teams, you would see, yes, uh, Liverpool, uh, you would see that uh, they still have a couple of giants to play. Likewise to Arsenal, uh, you have Chelsea, Tottenham, Spurs, you uh, do have uh, uh, teams that, as people say small, but they give her times. Uh, the loot tones that have, you know. Now, that's one big thing that is coming in there. Um, I believe two points difference is so big, but again, for the player by the names of, um, of, um, of uh, I mean, for the coach, Julian Klopp, you would see that, okay, this may be the time. Let's look at some of the three uh, top team, uh, the three t biggest games or bogey fixtures for the three teams. Arsenal is to play Chelsea. Arsenal still have uh, Spurs, and Arsenal has Manchester United to play. Those are three I think you should say, uh, which are unpredictable. Uh, anything can happen uh, because they are the proclaimed giants. Uh, <laughs> Manchester United will play Liverpool. 
uh, they have uh, they have uh, spurs they also do have a team of late that is in the top four aston villa now for man city they have aston villa they have spurs and brighton now who <laughs> you, would you see has the biggest advantage that's what i was talking about so city looks a favorite uh, if you looked on the paper but again it comes to the delivery because i've always said tottenham was pass is a scam <laughs> that's not a team that you should rely on uh so we're yet to see what exactly that will uh, mean to uh, the team for uh, looking at uh, of course uh, looking at uh, the fixtures uh, one by one uh, Arsenal has uh, Arsenal has uh, tough fixtures, I would say, compared to all uh, these other three. Uh, for Arsenal, uh, they have Chelsea, Spurs, and others uh, is Manchester United. Trust me, um, uh, yeah, Arsenal can come around and say yes, uh, they're going to win in the title uh, simply because they would underlook or underrate these other teams that are actually there that they are slated to play. For Manchester United, it's it's quite very tough. Uh, there is a uh, uh, the the the, the for for, 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 for Liverpool, I would say, uh, they have Manu, they have Spurs and Aston Villa. Very slippery teams that uh, before you jump into one of these fixtures, they look like underdogs to you, but wait after the 90 minutes. You will look for water to drink. Uh, then uh, for uh, there is a Manchester City, I would say uh, they can easily overcome uh, most of uh, the teams that are there supposed to play there is a spurs and a uh, brighton in here i think a uh, uh, manchester city has a, a little bit of uh, an easy uh three next fixtures compared to uh, there is uh, arsenal and uh, liverpool to me yeah let's wait and see what exactly will be coming but of course i love the display yesterday arsenal had to come uh philosophy of course they were outplayed by manchester city uh, around uh, you would see if uh, the, the percentage of uh, possession was very hard it looks it looked like an easy training for man city but arsenal i uh, did one thing over saying that we need to contain this game and to make sure that we disorganize the team of course key players were silenced after they were silenced you would see that uh, this is the right time to see that uh, they needed only that if arsenal went aggressive and got in the right uh, chances those chances that they got converted then you would see maybe arsenal become victors uh, because uh, the, uh, the, the, the funny Brazilian, Gabriel Jesus, uh, had chances that he wasted. Um, um, I, I, in my team, I don't think I would prefer Gabriel Jesus ahead of Trossard of light, uh, based on the current state. But again, if you look at uh, the team of uh, Arsenal, the defense line of uh, Kiori was not the best because every penetration, it became like a walkover for Bernardo Silva to, 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 to do anything against that defender, not until he was pulled off and Tommy Yasu was brought in to make sure that things were changed a little bit in the second half. And that's how exactly uh, Mikel Ateta spoiled the game in the first round. But in the sec second half, he looked at why don't we go to offensive? Which, of course, you did see the pressure piling on Man City, though still Man City came back and uh, started with the positions and here and there. Uh, the introduction of Doku and uh, Grealish changed something a little bit into the Man City team, uh, which of course uh, got ch chances, but still, I want to say the defense line of Arsenal was so solid, of Saliba, Maglez, uh -huh. who were very, very good in that defense and uh, the partnership after, of course, they couldn't allow uh, the beast uh, do anything. I'm talking about Erling Braut Haaland. He was emotionally uh, affected, which did not really give him the chance to convert what he wanted to convert. So that's one style that uh, Teta came with. He needed that draw. And indeed, the draw worked out for him. It worked out for him. Um, you literally see in that uh, Arsenal went in to pack the bus, I would say literally in the layman's language. Arsenal came in uh, this game to, of course, uh, defend. You literally see that uh, from uh, there is uh, the first minute over the game. And it worked out for him. Uh, there is a uh, big later. It worked out for the players. To me, uh, Arsenal players... Um, uh, uh, like I earlier said, uh, they, to me, they, they, they put across a very average display that literally helped them. Uh, one Arsenal fan said that uh, their players were affected in the international break. So basically, um, uh, it, was, it was a very uh, big, uh, tenacious game uh, for there is Arsenal, by the way, compared to Manchester City. But all in all, uh, they are sharing in uh, the points uh, there was literally something good for both teams. <laughs> and that's how you will see. Uh, but uh, uh, fans like uh, Lady Beats would be... Uh, <laughs> Like, that's that's the best. Of course, they know the tan uh, was it big, but made a lot of all in all, <laughs> it's made a lot of noise ahead all of this all. game. <laughs> uh, it was uh, it was a draw. I believe that was the best way to 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 handle Man City. Uh, of course, a team that is 
so good. Um, Arsenal equally lacks the depth. Uh, they have been a very good side. But again, a team like uh, you should be giving credit to Arsenal because they contained the team. Uh -huh. uh, maybe if that would be uh, the Manchester United, you would see how uh, the goals Swallow would goals, be yeah. uh, getting in there. Uh, so those are some of the things that probably are coming through right there. So, uh, of course, it was a very big game uh, for the team. Yesterday, Liverpool also won. And uh, again, it's Brighton, who are Valbion. Uh, Ale kickoff, Ale goal by that is uh, Danny Walbeck. Uh, but later on, you did see... Uh, the team of Liverpool through Mohamed Salah uh, getting, to, uh, getting uh, that winning goal I think was so, so impressive. Uh, that helped the team so much. Mark Alistair was on play. Uh, Zobes Lai was on play. Uh, you did see outstanding performance. But of course, I want to say Brighton did not get the best out of Simon Adingra, who of course was so tight marked and he couldn't do anything. Uh, for the team. So uh, I feel also Brighton missed uh, the services of Mitoma in that team because mm -hmm. he is one key name that has always been giving hard time. So, uh, but all in all, Liverpool are now on top of the table. What are we expecting? Do you see them keeping that consistency? Um, uh, if uh, you look at uh, their next three uh, fixtures that you actually gave us here a few minutes ago, you literally see that uh, Liverpool has a long way to go, but uh, they are capable, by the way, of winning in all the next three uh, games. And uh, Liverpool, uh, like your daily rain said, uh, someone uh, mentioned them as being the favorites for all this cup, but every other team is fighting. Arsenal is fighting. Manchester City is fighting. They are all in that mix. They are all in that Muchanganiko uh, over chasing in. Uh, but uh, to me, I think if Liverpool literally go in with uh, the, the, the current winning uh, form that they have, trust me, they can still contain the pressure. Summer, summer, we saw them uh, keeping top of the table and they stayed there for some time before Arsenal came through and only went there to test in the depth of the waters and finally handed it back to Liverpool. That has been there. When is the English Premier League will be returning with Arsenal taking on Luton 9.30pm and you have Brentford taking on uh, uh, of course Brighton 9.30 and Man City will be welcoming Aston Villa at exactly 10.15. Whereas on Thursday You'll be seeing uh, Liverpool taking on Sheffield uh, United at 9.30. Chelsea welcomes Manchester United uh, right there. Again, that will be another one. 10.15 will be the game uh, time. Uh, yesterday in the Spanish La Liga standard, uh, you did see Celta Vijo, uh, of course, uh, playing goalless draw with the uh, team of uh, Raval Hano. And uh, Girona had to win against uh, Real Betis by three goals to two. As Deportivo Alves lost to Real Sociedad by one goal to nil. And Real Madrid read the top table leaders with 75 already now are beating team of course Atletico club by two goals to nil. A lot of transfer speculations and rumors moving on but that will be for another day which will be tomorrow. Your parting words. Um, uh, Koboko uh, district post primary games um, are supposed to come to an end today. Our finals uh, where we saw uh, Yume Memorial uh, taking in Daystar in the uh, the game is ongoing. Ayume Memorial already was leading uh, two goals to one. And uh, then in the girls, it's supposed to be Kochi versus uh, Koboko or Public in there. Great afternoon. Have a very blessed day uh, for those who are following. Thank you so much for watching. Up next will be the movie on West Nile Television. Keep it locked.